Okay, here we are. Hello, everybody. Wow, it's been a while. Uh, we haven't done a live show since our Year of the Ox broadcast earlier this year. So, yeah, I mean, we've been busy. Don't get me wrong. Uh, it's not like we've been slacking over here. No. <laughs> no. Really, what I mean to say is that uh, we are actually so excited to come back to the live streams, the broadcasts. We are planning to do these on a regular basis now, probably once every few weeks. And we've got a bunch of different friends and guests that we've been talking to who we're going to be featuring on the show, including new, uh, new designs that we will teach and uh, you know, models by different creators and all of that. So uh, it's just, I've, I've been so excited about today especially given the, uh, the subject matter and our special guest, but we'll get to that in just a second. Um, but I just wanna give a shout out to some of the people who, or to all the people, frankly, <laughs> who are here right now. Um, but I, uh, here, I'm sorry, I'm kind of juggling some different windows here and I have to mute this and, okay, Helena, hi, welcome. Good to see you. Hello, Carol, Luann, Brent, Joan. So good to see you. Hey, Beth, Margaret, Margaret Van Sicklin. Oh my goodness, good to see you. All right. Uh, Carol, Christine, Marna, Sherry. And I, you know, I, I don't mean to exclude anyone, but uh, anyway, it's just, it's just so great to be back. Okay, now before we get started with the, uh, the feature today, uh, I want to uh, let you all know. So over at origamishop.us, we have just put together a convention paper supply pack. So I should have started by saying, so the Origami USA online convention is coming up in June. And uh, I have signed up to teach. What's really cool about OUSA this year is that they have now opened the the, the teaching uh, slots, so to speak, up to anyone who, who wants to teach. So uh, I, I, I have requested to teach two classes. We'll see if I get them both. I imagine I'll probably get at least one of them, but uh, and I won't reveal what those are just yet. But, um, but I do want you to know that we have put together a, here, let me grab this, a little handy supply paper pack in case you need some paper for the convention. Um, so I just want to show you what's in that real quick and here I just need to unplug my headphones for a second okay so we've got here let me switch my cameras here we go do to do all right and sorry for the glare but uh, you can get a pack of six inch 15 centimeter 24 centimeter we've got like five uh, nine and nine and a half inch specialty sheets you get 10 35 centimeter sheets of taunt and nine 35 centimeter sheets of Kami, and that's roughly 14 inches. So it's a nice little paper pack. We just listed it on the Origami Shop website. We will be dropping a link in the chat over here on Crowdcast, but um, maybe I won't, be, I won't be able to drop the link over on Facebook. I know we've got people watching on both Facebook and Crowdcast, and uh, so, here, let me plug my headphones back in. Okay, there we go. All right, so just bear with us. Uh, all right, cool. So, just wanted to get that out of the way. All right, so now I think we're ready to start. Uh, let me introduce our special guest. Now, uh, Talo Kawasaki is a friend of mine. I cannot even recall when we met. I feel like he, he and I have always just kind of been buddies ever since I started going to origami conventions. And that was about maybe 15 years ago now. And so I, um, I, I've always loved running into Talo at the conventions. And uh, the thing that, that always, that I love about, one of the things, one of the many things I love about Talo, besides that he's just a great guy, we get along well, great sense of humor, but he, he always has new and creative things and new, and I, new ideas to share with me. And, and it's just so fun seeing all the different ideas that he comes up with and 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 when it comes to origami i you know i i consider talo to be a, a true a true artist uh when it comes to origami because of the 
sort of creative elements that he brings to the process. So without further ado, uh, let's bring Talo on here. Here we go. Hey, Talo. Well, wait a minute. What's what? <laughs> wait a minute. What's up with your hey, background? You... Are you trying to copy? Are you trying to copy? my uh i don't know i think it might be you uh, yeah that's what it is that's you got me all right you got me fair enough fair, you know i had i had to you know you you put so much work into setting up your background for today and in fact here actually i'm going to show i'm going to show everybody a slide so you just get like a full view look at that look at that creative origami shelf which i think is a great sort of lead into our conversation here. I mean, look at all that great, cool, colorful stuff. Um, anyhow, here, here, let me, let me come back over here, front facing, and you know what? I'm gonna add myself over here to the left. Here we are, we've got these cool, fancy fly-ins. Oh, <laughs> wow, very good. Yeah. You're getting very pro, very pro. I'm working on it every day, every day. So, Talo, well, how you been lately? You been I'm up good. Okay? Yeah, I'm good. Yeah. And um, and just working with you and Sarah for today's session has really got my creative juices going, and I, I get to share them with everybody. So I'm really happy about that. Yeah, you know, and it's that's so true because, and same same for me. I mean just so the audience knows, we've actually been, we've been planning this for about a couple of months. I mean, we've been meeting regularly and, you know, we, we've had so much going on. We kind of like, you know, kind of push it back, but we were like, okay, we gotta do this. But then point is, is that we, I, I was watching Talo like continually develop new projects or new ideas while we were planning for all of this. And so and we're gonna, you're gonna get to see a lot of that today, quite frankly, but, um, but Talo, um, before we get into that, though, I, I just want to talk a little bit about you uh, and hear a little bit about your story. And um, so from, some, from from our conversations, uh, I learned that you, so you started folding origami when you were 10 years old, and it was your, your father mm -hmm. yeah. who, who taught you uh, your first origami fold. So tell yes. us a little bit about that, like, where, like about, you know, growing up and kind of like getting into origami back then. Well, I mean, basically, I mean, I don't know how it was possible, but my dad actually taught me how to fold a crane. That was the first thing he taught me how to fold. I don't think he knew what else to fold, to tell you the truth. And I was able to get through it, and, but I just thought it was just so cool being able to take a sheet of paper and fold it into something. And then it just blossomed from there. I actually... Um, God, I still have the book he gave me. <laughs> I love me. that. You just reached behind. <laughs> yes, <laughs> right here. <laughs> oh, my goodness. That's your first origami book. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh. Although we yeah, used to have a little origami stuck here. Oh, and yeah. Back when they would actually glue the models into the book, right? Yeah, or yeah. Book. But, yeah. This is, um, but this was a Honda book. Right. And um, for years... Um, I would fold from just a couple of those books and then later I got this book. Ah, yes, a classic. Uh, a classic. Awesome classic. By yeah. Honda. Yeah. And yeah. Um, it, um, it was kind of the, um, it was my Bible for, for years. But, um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but the, the thing is that it wasn't until much later, after years and years of, um, of just being a lone folder, I got a job mm -hmm. teaching origami uh, during brunch in mm -hmm. a restaurant here in the city, New York City. And that's what really had me figure out, oh, well, I need to learn more. So mm -hmm. I found out about joining origami usa and the conventions and, and the whole origami community so that was that's really where things took off for me 
Yeah, I know. I, I, I think you and I probably had a similar experience, as I'm sure a lot of people, when they, you know, like, if they've been into origami for a while, and then they attend their first convention, and you're like, wow, there are all these other people who share this passion, you know. Uh, it's like, uh, this is mind-blowing. And, and then there's, and there's just, just, like, so much to learn. You know, if you're already into doing origami, you're into learning things, and then suddenly the doors are just flung wide open, and there's just, like, so much more that you can learn from all these different people. And, um, yeah, so it's, it's, the origami community is a very beautiful and special thing, and uh, I feel so, so grateful that it exists, and especially to be a part of it. Um, so. I also find that um, origami people tend to be the happiest people around. I, I don't you know, know what it, everybody is together. They're all walks of life, ages, you know, seniors and kids. And you're right. I, I mean, mean it's, it is such a fun <laughs> bunch. I mean, that's why that's what has kept me going back to conventions time and time again. I mean, the origami is cool and all, but it's really it's really more about the people, right? Yeah. Uh, the, yeah. You know, it. I, I, like, I have so many good close friends that are all from the origami community. You know, it's yeah. like I feel like I yeah. like I hang out with them more uh, than I do like friends like from like you know my corner of the the world and all that. But but anyhow, yeah. So, um. I wanted to talk a little bit too about your your family's heritage. So, so you tell us a little bit about your parents and 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 did they immigrate to the United States? Uh, yes, they yeah. immigrated in um, the mid fifties, mm -hmm. and um, that must have been pretty crazy and outrageous. Yeah, at that time in history. Yeah, I mean that's only. 10 years after World War II, I mean, my father designed ships, and it wasn't until much later I, d I found out that he was working on subs, <laughs> Whoa. Japanese subs. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, he, he was only in his early 20s at the time, mm -hmm. and um, but anyway, um, I won't go yeah, into yeah. all that. Yeah. Well, but, the reason I bring it up is because um, I, I, I think you, you relate a story about uh, going, I, again, I think this is around the time that your dad first taught you your first paper crane, mm -hmm. and it was like maybe around the time that you were about to go to Japan for the first time to visit your, your parents' right. And families, right? Right, exactly, exactly. Cool. Yeah. Did, go ahead. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, I think it was a, a way of um, connecting with my heritage, the whole uh, folding and um, it was also, I mean, we're talking in the mid 60s and there was, um, it was something for us to do to keep me and my brother and sister occupied while we were flying halfway around the world to Japan. And it was good that we had the origami because there was an airline strike going on. Oh and my goodness. We, I mean, this was all across America, and we got stuck in a couple of different places. One of them was Hawaii. Oh, no. <laughs> no. Oh, yeah. oh, my God. <laughs> but, <laughs> wow. But, <laughs> <laughs> could, be, could be worse. Yeah. And then what happened was we, my dad was able to figure out a way to get to LA and we he decided all right screw the whole thing with the airlines we're going to drive yeah. back and this I you know I grew up in New Orleans and so we were driving from LA to New Orleans and we got to see all kinds of great things we saw the Grand Canyon the Hoover Dam um, uh, Death Valley mm -hmm. and went through all kinds of different parts of the country it was mm -hmm. great Cool. So, so let's fast forward now. Um, when would you say that when you started kind of like interacting with the origami community, was was what, had you sort of been experimenting or designing any of your own stuff up until then, or were, were you just folding stuff that you found in books up to that point? I, I no. I, I mean, I wasn't creating my own stuff. Mm -hmm. I was. Um, I think like anybody who gets seriously into origami 
they may may start trying to change it a little bit because they weren't quite happy with the way it looked, maybe the way it was designed. Um, my the one model that I used to fold pretty regularly was the traditional origami frog that um, that hops, but the more complicated one. And come to find out, at least that's what it says in the Honda book, that this was created by a monk from like 900 AD. Mm -hmm. And it's an okay frog, but a lot of times if you, no, I mean, the original design looks okay, but if you don't fold it with the right sort of proportions, it can kind of just look like a bug. Right. Or at least that's what I thought. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I just, I kept trying different things to alter it, to get them, make it look different. and. That was the beginning, I think, of my uh, venturing into cre creating my own stuff. But then, you know, and then the other thing too is um, I went to art school, and, and I was always into painting and drawing and stuff. And I felt that, you know, you're folding with paper, and paper by itself is a medium mm -hmm. that people will change. They'll paint it or. You can do all kinds of different things, and um, so I've I've still kept to that. I I still kept to the idea. Well, I don't have to buy pattern paper. I can make my own pattern paper. Uh -huh. or, yeah. And, you, you know, know it's funny. My like, own thing. I I still like I still I keep learning more and more about you. I still didn't realize that you had gone to art school. It just makes that makes a lot more sense. Like when you go to art school and you start. You're kind of trained to think like an artist, right? And then, and what's kind of right. cool about what I've always appreciated about growing up within, you know, with like a lot of really great arts education in my life, and then I, I minored in studio art in in college, but is that like it? You it gives you this lens and sort of this mindset for approaching the rest of the world, I and mean, you can think creatively and kind of think outside the box in a number of different ways beyond just creating, you know, artistic. Uh, media so so yeah okay so that's starting it's starting to make a lot more sense mm -hmm. to to me you know that that you know what when you look at the stuff that you you do with preparing paper uh tala does a lot of really great paper preparation uh whether it's like painting or texturizing and uh and then he also does a lot of really cool variations on models by the way you you mentioned the um you've t you, you've talked about uh, you know, like when you teach a model, like sometimes you modify the, the folding sequence to make it maybe sure. easier or better, you know, better suited for, for the class. You know, I feel like that's another example of that. But so what we're going to look at today, uh, and by the way, I just want to let you know, we've got people from Peru, Germany tuning in right now. Uh, hey, Dirk, Dirk Eisner. And we've got uh, in and Maria and there's oh there's so many there's people from all over the globe. Wow. Hello. How cool is that? <laughs> oh my God. Um, so anyway, all right. So today let's 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 kind of get to the get to the main attraction here. So what's what's what I uh, okay. So what we're gonna do? We are going to. Well, I'm gonna let Talo do the talking. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm tripping over my words a little bit here. But um, but he is. That's going, okay. We're, I'll trip over mine <laughs> yeah, too. Okay. okay. <laughs> we'll just pick each other back up. Um, but uh, but yeah. So today the topic of today's lesson is a Snapdragon model, which Talo has made a lot of really interesting uh, modifications with and, and created numerous iterations that that shoot off in mm. a lot of different directions. Okay. So well, you are the cause of this. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, yes. It's all my fault, but I, that's really cool. Uh, uh, good, good. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm so happy to hear that. And you know, and that's, that's, you know, creative people. They just feed off of one another and they inspire one another. So I guess we're doing something right. Okay. So, all right, Tal, I'm going to hand it over to you and uh, let you begin your presentation. Okay. Well. Uh, 
we're calling it the Snapdragon, but uh, and it looks sort of like this. This is the more traditional thing. You can, I usually fold it from a uh, letter size paper. You can fold it from A4 uh, as well as a square. Um, and I always loved it because it had a lot of animation, but it had no eyes. Uh, I mean, you could draw eyes. What? I, I mean, I love drawing and painting and stuff, so I could do the same sort of thing. Um, but I, I just felt like for uh, an origami item like this, it should have eyes. And then I noticed one day, oh wait, there's some extra paper here. I could pull out some paper here and, and make eyes with, with this. And that's how I developed something as simple as this model right here. So you have kind of eyes and you can also, um, it doesn't have to be this way. Right now I have the eyes sort of like horns pointing upwards, but you could fold these in the reverse way and they would be a, a much lower sort of profile and, and do some other things. And then I started experimenting with um, uh, some pattern papers that I, I happen to have. And I, you can get a, a, a color change going on with this. And um, or and wait a minute, there's there's also paper not only up here but there's paper down here. So here I I created a version where it it had some some things going on here, changes the profile even more, and and that's where I was up to when when I. Um, started talking to James and, and Sarah about about today's little uh, session. And I was thinking, well, if I'm going to do something with James, I, you know, we got to do something that's even more outrageous. I want to try to, <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, I'm I, honored, Tolo. I, I really am. I'm honored. I, I started, you know, I, I was showing you how uh, to do some things with textures. And I'm going to show you everybody examples of things like that. But as a preview for 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 today's um, show, oh, let's see. I want to. I'm stuck here. I want to show. Oh, you got the spotlight. Uh, something. Yeah, little spotting here. I got a little chicken head here and a rooster over here. Then there's the dragon head. Which uh, you guys saw for the um, uh, for the announcement, and then I took it even further with the T Rex over here, and and I'm gonna show you how I basically approach all these different things. Um, but but to begin with, I think what I'm gonna do is just show you how to. Um, fold this this basic model and and just tell you that and, and suggest different ways you can make it you know truly your own that's that's one of the things i really liked about um michael lafosse's butterflies is you know he felt a whole system for doing things and this isn't a system but it's a good model that i feel like you can uh, do some really interesting things with. So, um, if you want to follow along, I'm going to try to uh, set up my camera view just like James does to a certain degree. <laughs> You've taught me a few things, James. <laughs> You're hard to keep up with. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> but let me see. Let's see if we're. We're going to be okay. Oh, I think we're doing okay with our camera. All right. All Yay, right. didn't freeze. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, so, so, 
the first thing I need to tell you really quickly, since especially since we have some uh, participants from uh, from overseas. And they're not folding with letter size paper, which is eight and a half by eleven, and are more likely folding with A4. What I suggest is you trim about one centimeter off um, off the length of it. So the, um, the reason I'm asking you to do that is so you're going to get as good an action with your model. As um, as we do with letter size paper, um, so what you could do is just fold it a little bit, you know, like a um, a centimeter or so, and then just trim it off with scissors, or if you have a special cutter, you can use that too. Um, this model, at least, is very forgiving, and you can um, fold things um, with. Oh, a little leeway. It, it's uh, uh, it has some uh, robust qualities, so you don't have to be super precise about how you fold it. Anyway, um, I don't want to. I want to show all all kinds of different things for you guys. So uh, let me try to walk us through how to fold it. It's, it's really pretty simple. So I'm going to fold it, as you can see with the diagram. I'm going to bring this end down to this end, and we're just going to fold it in half, right? And then what we'll do is take this cut edge and fold it up to the creased edge. And we want to do the same thing on the other side. So let's flip it over to the other side, take this cut edge, and fold it to that creased edge. Oh, um, I'm showing in my diagram that we need to fold it and unfold it. So I'm going to unfold that there, flip it over, and unfold it there. All right, let's see. All this technology, James, you're, you're going to drive me crazy. Oh, yeah, <laughs> trust me, I feel you. <laughs> but anyway, what we're going to do now is um, on uh, this creased corner here, because we have the creased edge here, we're going to fold each of these creased corners to the creases, the, the, this new crease here. So I'll fold that there, and fold that there. Now when you fold these corners, you're not going to fold both layers. You just want to fold the top layer, so I'll fold that up there. Now, you guys will have to forgive me. I don't, I won't know if you want, if I'm going too fast or too slow, or if you need to see me repeat something, but um, so far so good in the chat. Nobody's okay. Yeah, yeah. So um, if anybody is, you know, please speak up in the chat if anybody needs anything clarified or repeated. And we'll consider. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> we'll consider your request. So, we don't got a lot of time here. <laughs> so, anyway, I'm going to take this and I'm going to fold this flap up and fold it up here as shown on the diagram. And I'm going to um, now flip it over as the diagram shows. And so, so just just to repeat, we were here. I folded it up, and then. I flipped it over to this point. I know that um, one of the hardest things about teaching um, online is sometimes you spend too much time looking down at your paper and not enough time looking at your uh, 
looking at what the teacher's showing is. <laughs> or folding these two corners, these last two corners, there. And then we're going to go ahead and it'll look like this. And then we're going to fold that up, right? Now, this at this point, we're showing two different things, which is um, we're going to put a little pinch crease right here in the center. So I'll go ahead and do that. I'm going to bring this point over to the other point here. And you just need a, I don't know, half inch or one and a half centimeter sort of uh, partial crease there. Now, here's the new innovation is to reach in here, this layer, and pull out a thin layer. And then you want to pull out the other thin layer. Do not pull out the creased corner. You just want the thin ones here. And so we have this sort of uh, thing right here. And we do have that little pinch crease still there. So for our next step, now this is, this is the thing that some people do not like this model uh, because there's a small cut. And Very good, James. <laughs> I didn't scare anybody too much. That <laughs> was kind of loud. <laughs> that was a little loud. I turned it down. I turned it down. Uh, okay. Anyway, you could cut that little bit, or I, I go a little farther and be a little more radical and tear it. Um, <sighs> and <laughs> we could tear it, and I'll show you why you, we can tear it. You just want to tear it like half an inch or one and a half centimeters uh, because we are going to lift up one of these layers and put a, a shallow little diagonal that goes from the top of that tear or cut to the outer point here. And the same thing happens from over here to this corner. So I'm going to go ahead and fold those up here. Do the same thing over there. Flip it over and fold those little shallow diagonals to make little lips for our Snapdragon. It's also sometimes referred to as a gnasher or a dragon head. Um, so if you've torn it like I have, and I tore it pretty well actually, um, what we're gonna do, because I never liked the way these corners look, I, I would always fold these corners behind it to give it a much more finished look. Um, here it, it shows on that diagram that particular action. And yeah, I agree. I think that that is a necessary step. I'm glad you showed now, that part. Now, yeah, I, I, I have folded this model though without the tear or the cut too. And um, I think um, I have an example of it. Uh, that I'm going to show later. But now th with these flaps here, we, we want to, uh, what you might want to do is you could reinforce the crease that's already there and fold that down. And you can do the same thing on the other side. And for simplicity's sake, I just folded a rabbit ear with this flap. But you can do it whether it's this way and fold the rabbit ear with valley folds, or it could be the reverse of that, and it could be 
um, you know, like a mountain creases. But for now, I'm just going to fold it. Actually, I'm going to fold it as um, mountain folds to get a different look because the example I showed you was the reverse of that. And I'm going to... Can you, can you kind of describe the rabbit ear for folks in case people don't know what a rabbit ear is? Oh, yeah, sure. Thanks. Basically, I'm going to take this cut edge and fold it to the creased edge over here, unfold it, and then I'm going to fold this cut edge and fold it to the creased edge. And then it's a case of incorporating both creases together and adding a crease that goes up to this corner here. So let's fold that there. So that now when Let's see, we go to this next step. We're putting mountain folds in here. We're basically opening this whole thing up. That's what the big arrow is showing and showing this completed snap dragon, dragon head. Sarah's been calling it a chomper. Um, yeah, and, there, you know, there's another model that's somewhat similar that is often called a chomper, and so yeah, we've been we've definitely been using that synonymously. Yeah, and so here I I'm just sort of folding the tips of these rabbit ear corners down to suggest more finished looking eyes, right? And the the idea is that. You can do whatever you want with these flaps to suggest eyes or suggest um, um, horns. Or like I said, what if you reached in and pulled out the other flaps that were underneath it and you're going to give it you're going to change the profile of it even further. It's like you, um, you've you given it a beard, or um, you can fold some sort of uh, accordion fold-like things. It's, it's already dramatically changed how this looks. It's almost more froggy looking just from this profile. Um, yeah, you know, I have to say, Tal, like one thing that I, I see a lot with designers is that like good design origami designers is that they're always trying to make efficient use of the paper. They're not, they don't want any of the paper to go to waste. Oh, no, no. Well, or or well, or you don't use parts of it because <laughs> if you don't if you don't use it, um, sometimes it'll it's it's for the look that you want too. Right, so. that's true. So I also um, have to have to say I, I like your version of the eyes a little better than mine. I, I just kind of went the easy route. Ah! <laughs> 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 but you incorporated a version that I thought was pretty innovative. Um, you really it's it's what spurred me on. Oh, yeah. Well, um, yeah. About that. <laughs> <laughs> but um, but before we get into that, I, I want to just, uh, since we I do have the document camera showing up, I wanted to sh uh, touch a little bit on, on the whole idea of using the paper for different, um, uh, for different sort of painting techniques. Um, let me uh, fix something here on my, uh, my camera. Well, 
like one of the simplest things I used to fold all kinds of different origami frogs and I, I would fold them from uh, colored letter size paper and I would just sort of scribble the paper with colored markers and and, and that's a, a very simple thing you can do you can uh, and it's uh, it's all um, about um, drawing just different strokes or, or, or whatever. I Here, I just scribbled and then I threw in some slashes or dashes and, and stuff. And you can do all kinds of different colors and stuff. Um, another technique I've used, which is uh, one of my favorite version of things, is um, sponge painting. I, I'll take a like a, a sea sponge, just a small bit of it, and just dab it in some paint and just sort of uh, jumped around and splattered it. You can use, you know, colored acrylic paints or um, uh, watercolors. I even, even use um, school uh, like um, temp, uh, tempera paint, you know, the really cheap stuff. Because, uh, you know, we're just trying to have some fun with it. Yeah, or, but and other, also, other times know, I've used uh, gold, gold paint. I've used gold metallic paint for a fancier one. Yeah, You're you saying, know, James? Yeah, yeah. And I'm sorry to interrupt you. Um, so, yeah, it's funny how sometimes the, the cheaper paint is really what works better than the fancier stuff. Uh, I mean, for one thing, like you said, you know, we're just having fun, you know, it doesn't have to be anything fancy, but you know, uh, sometimes the cheaper paints kind of go on a little bit thinner, they don't, they're not as thick or as, um, there isn't as much like polymer in them. So, so it's like, it, it works better for the, for the paper and the folding process. Um, one thing I, I, I so I want to show you something real quick that I came up with, Talo. Um, so, so you, you know how, uh, -huh. uh they're like, <laughs> there are all these instances of scientists using origami uh, scientists and engineers using origami for scientific applications right so did you know that they used origami to develop cloaking devices for stealth bombs <laughs> you see that and oh yeah, my it's a God. Little known fact. yeah yeah so it's, it's like a stealth so you can see it. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, it's so yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Very good, James. Yeah. I applaud you. <laughs> Thank you. I was watching Star Trek, and it was, it was inspired by the Cleon cloaking device. Oh, my gosh, yes. Us, using the technology. I love it. I love it. Uh, <laughs> Another thing, very quickly, is, you know, I'm just using, it could be a cheap brush, it could be a fancy brush, this is, I don't know, it's a sumae, it's a Japanese brush painting brush, and I'll, I'll just do sort of quick strokes with some paint. This is using tempera paint, and I'll fold this paper to create, um, Koi, you know, um, it makes a really nice looking um, koi fish, and and then there's a whole thing I do with uh, crinkling papers, and then there's a, another thing uh, which I had shown you guys, which um, I know a lot of my friends I've shown this ad nauseum is my uh <laughs> it's a great technique Tala. don't sell yourself short okay it's this very simple sort of um uh, texture uh, introduced to me by brad arter i think his name was and it's very simple to do i think we're kind of running out of time so maybe you know at some point uh at the end i, I could show you how to do it but I want to go on to kind of show you something new that I'm really excited about because of James' uh, want to bring me on, and that's with the um, this new technique of using two sheets of paper. Yeah. 
I'm gonna switch cameras now. While you're switching, uh, we have a few comments um, that, uh, yeah, and I totally agree with this from Mariana uh, saying that, you know, acrylic paints often make the folds not as crisp and just they're not good for making reverse folds. Totally agree with that. And Mariana also suggests uh, Blick watercolor markers being great for treating paper. Yeah, that, I'm sure I could. I'm sure I could. I, I have had some problems with acrylic, but I think if it's thin, um, thin enough, I think it can work as well. Um, but anyway, uh, I wanted to show this chicken head that I created. It's the same chomper or snapdragon head. Now, this may look familiar to James <laughs> <laughs> because he's the one who showed me this action. <laughs> yeah. So, but, yeah, sorry. No, go ahead, Tyler. But the thing is, this color change is created by folding two different colors of paper together. And the advantage of that is instead of um, of having to fold the paper only one way, you have another layer of paper to fold independent of the basic model. And, and that's, uh, so I was able to create eyes for my chicken head here and create uh, the comb up here as well as under here the little uh, waddle for for this like hen like chicken and then for the rooster I have this much more uh, a bigger cox comb which is just a is that a, is that a, frog a square base? It's a, um, it's actually simpler than that. It's a water bomb base. So it, it, it unfolds like that. Oh, so you can okay. see it here. So I just folded it. You know, I wanted to keep it as simple as possible. I wanted, um, I knew that with a water bomb base, I would have two flaps that I could use to stick inside the head itself. That's the other great thing about this particular um, model is the fact that you have a seam in here to stick things in. You have one down here. You have one inside. You have one on on the back as well. So you can you don't have to limit yourself to. Um, to using just one sheet of paper, you can have two sheets, or you can add extensions. Extensions, nice. It's like and the prosthetics I went, of origami. I went. I, that's what I did for this dragon head, so that I have separate horns here. Um, from. Again, I think this, well, this was from, I think, a triangle that I folded. And then um, I know for the, uh, I wanted to give him a longer, oops, let's see, I wanted to give him a longer uh, profile. Also, this was, again, folded with two sheets of paper. Yeah! <laughs> The dragon roar. I even added flames. Now, uh, I gotta say, this is not origami <laughs> with the flames. It's beyond origami, Tyler. It's kirigami. Ooh. I took a, I just took a piece of red paper, folded it uh, with a few um, accordion folds, and it cut out my little. Uh, flame shapes, but for for all of this, there I didn't use any glue on it. Well, that's no, a relief. So, yeah. 
<laughs> and added these flames on it. Uh, this his chin is also a separate piece. But then I wanted to do the ultimate, like with the um, with the chicken heads. I had um, I had the head, right, and then I I felt like it needed a neck, so I added. A neck. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> but this was this is just folded from another sheet of uh, letter sized paper. And I just uh, I didn't uh, didn't um, fold I, I, I kept it fairly simple. I just basically put an inside reverse fold, I fold it in half lengthwise for, for the head, uh, for the long length of the neck, and then I put an inside reverse on the corner here, and then I had these two flaps to play around with to help create the flap I needed so that I could use it to attach back here on the back of my chicken head and and shape it so that I could uh, have this this sort of look and I knew about that idea because I liked the body of uh, Roman Diaz's and um, and Joseph Wu's uh, T-Rex. It, you know, it had great clawed feet and these little arms, and it has a nice uh, three-dimensional quality to it that you blow up with. But the head, it's kind of eh. <laughs> <laughs> Not quite uh, hitting the mark for you. I mean, I, I still think it's a great model. It, but right. and you know I've what? got a, I've got a cool story about that here when you're done. Okay. So, but I took Robert Lang's T Rex head with teeth and figured out. Oh wait, I could probably attach it to this body. I'm not I'm not going to really attach it to it for you right now because I have this version. <laughs> And it uses <laughs> it uses my <laughs> it uses my uh, sponge technique for painting the paper. Um, and I I painted this with uh, acrylic paints. Even the color change is uh, with acrylic paints. So, I, you know, I'm not totally against acrylic paints. But here, I attached a one of one of these um, Snapdragon heads, uh, used both the flaps on the top and, and the bottom. And to prove that, I will take this off and I use Robert Lang's T-Rex head to give it dentures. <laughs> dino, <laughs> dino dentures. Yes, dino dentures. See? <laughs> oh, you must be pretty old. Like a fossil or something. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, so, uh, you know, about that, um, I, I'm, it's so cool that you use that model specifically. Um, so, so check this out. So I'm over here on uh, Joseph Wu's Flickr page, and he posted this. This is, like, from 2008. Um, and uh, so he, his, his caption, Roman Diaz taught this bird at the pro retreat. I immediately saw some possibilities with the design and de-evolved the bird, <laughs> which is pretty funny, into a T-Rex. 
Uh, Roman <laughs> appeared to like it. He said, I'm taking this, and I'm not asking you. I'm telling you. <laughs> 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 and so, sure enough, uh, so yeah, so then, uh, let, me, let me see here. Is this, um, oh yeah, yeah, here it is. So, so then you can see it here, and, oh darn, I thought that I was, um, shoot, I wanted to go. So Roman Diaz also has this posted on his page, but what's really cool is that both that geometric bird and the um, this T-Rex show up in a book that Roman published with uh, Nicholas Terry, uh, I think about 2009, and it has both the geometric bird that uh, that is from um, you know that that Joseph based his modification on. And then there's the T-Rex, right? And what's even cooler right. is that Joseph Wu wrote the foreword for this book. And it's like, I love, like, what, this was the first fancy origami book that I ever bought. This was, like, years ago. I had not met anybody in the origami, not very many people in the origami community, but I knew about this origami shop in Europe. And so I, I ordered this expensive book, and, you know, I had to wait a long time to, you know, for it to arrive. But I remember reading the foreword to this and just being, like, so inspired because clearly like Joseph really thinks highly of Roman and I'm sure the feeling is mutual and you know everyone's always kind of like feeding off of one another and learning from one another so I just thought that was a really cool example of that and it, I have it, that book too yeah <laughs> that's, that's, a, that's, that's a how I book. learned it <laughs> yeah. so yeah but yet another example of, of taking one design and modifying it to create something new something we do all the time I think well some of us anyway, <laughs> anyway um, I think we only have a few couple more minutes mm -hmm. um, yeah. so and this is good so we, we did have a question about texturing the paper I believe the question was what what, what type of paper do you use for the texturing um, I'll use anything I can get yeah mm -hmm. I mean as long as it's fairly crisp um, you know, th then then it'll respond to texturizing, but um, uh, you can use almost anything. Uh, soft papers are, you're going to get texture, but um, it might be better if it got wet or something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Cool. So did you want to show us a really quick uh, texturing technique? Well, or, I can or... show you the one that I do, which is you take a piece of paper and you start, let's say, at a corner and you want to kind of roll it up. I, I'm going to have to try to do this very quickly since I know our time. Oops. All right, I think we ran out of time. I don't know if people All right, want to Tala, that's it. We're, we'll okay. see you later, folks. <laughs> yeah. Bye. No, just kidding. No, you've got it. Go ahead. Go for it. All right. So I've, I've rolled it up. It's fairly tight. I want to really crease it flat. Sometimes I'll use the edge of a table or something. See, so yeah, I fold it. And then I'm going to very precisely, hardly <laughs> very precisely, uh, fold, <laughs> put in some. I, I, I guess that's the liometer, <laughs> <laughs> lie detector. Um, Actually, I meant oh, to hit. I meant to hit this one. Uh oh. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> so, I, I I folded all those little zigzagging diagonals, and then I just sort of carefully unfold it, and it just creates this magical texture based on the paper being compressed and stretched and taking on this whole new form. And you can do this one way and you can do it in the another opposite direction if you like. Um, sometimes I'll mix and match it. Um, and and it, it's just, uh, it changed my whole view about handling paper like sometimes you buy this expensive paper and you get a little kink in it and you think oh my god it's ruined mm -hmm. not anymore yeah 
you know, when you know you can do it, put in a texture in the paper, it's just like, that kinks nothing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, it is such a cool looking texture that you get from this result. And it, it's, uh, it's, it's so reptilian and scaly looking. Yeah, I, you know, and there are other things we can do to create textures. Um, you know, the, the whole Vincent Florer um, school of origami, you know, they're doing all that stuff, the, the crimping, right, or the crinkling of the paper, um, that creates a whole nother sort of look. But, you know, this is the poor man's tessellation. <laughs> <laughs> or the lazy man's tessellation. You don't have to be, or it doesn't matter whether you're poor. The clever man, <laughs> the clever man's tessellation. <laughs> it's funny because there's that French uh, artist collective in it that, that is referred to in the documentary Between the Folds, Le Crimp. And I think that they, they kind of use a kind of a crumpled and organic approach to, to their folding. I'm yes, that's correctly. that's yeah. Vincent Flutter. That's right. That's right. Thank you. Yeah. Well, cool. Well, Talo, this has been really <laughs> special. This has been so. <laughs> 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 and uh, you know, um, this has just been a lot of fun. And oh, you know, I I do have to show one thing because you referred to it and I haven't shown it, and I I, f I feel like I kind of need to. So. Okay, so Talo, I think, was inspired by one thing that I created. Now, this isn't the actual Snapdragon, but... <laughs> Very good. Yeah, so this is, this is actually that chomper, which, which the, it's actually it's a, a hexahedron. <laughs> and this is my prototype. I wanted to try to make it with the Snapdragon, but I like the angle of the, um, like, like the mechanism. It I can't pull it down as easily. It seems like you you got it to work, to to well, a degree. But um, well, what I've done is, um, I, I yeah, I have some uh, nylon filament, and I put it more towards the front. And the, um, the yeah okay the I pulling see. is at the bot in the back corner mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. that's the way this one works. Got it. Gotcha. Well, very cool. So uh, I want to tell you all how to find Talo online, so you can check him out on Instagram at Talo Kawasaki, and on June seventh. Uh, Talo is actually interviewed for a different program called Not Just a Hobby, and he will be featured on episode number seven, and you can find that on YouTube. Just search for Not Just a Hobby, and again, that will be released June 7th. And so go and be sure to check that out. Uh, Talo, it has been so cool working with you, getting all this uh, set up, and um, you know, we. I think we kind of pulled it off. I think we, we, we did it. There was, we, we were kind of, I mean, there's always so many things that could go wrong, you know, but, uh, you know, I think, I think anyway, well, I just, I, <laughs> go ahead. I was just thinking about the virtual camera and having the, my desktop show. Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I know. We, in all of our rehearsals, the software that we use to do the multiple camera thing, it kept freezing every single time, <laughs> and so we, we it was good though because we we knew then to it to to expect it. But yeah, but, keep an eye on it. All right, cool. Well, Talo, anything else? Any parting words before we go? Um, I I encourage any everybody to just fold, have some fun. You know, don't don't be afraid of changing things or doing things that. Um, or go beyond, you know, the diagram. Just, um, just have, have fun with it. Paint it, tear it, cut it, glue it. <laughs> now, okay. Whoa, whoa, whoa. No, no. I, you know, I. This is all. That's purely a joke. I, I use glue a lot. I'm not gonna lie, but only. But you know, only when it's when it's necessary. I'm not like. 
Well, anyway, that's for another <laughs> episode. <laughs> cool. All right, Tom. Well, I hope we get to um, do this again. Yeah, Can't yeah. Choose. I hope we. I hope I'm we do honored. too. And folks, let us know if you'd like to see Talo come back and demonstrate some other techniques. I know that he is a well of great ideas and uh, you know creative inspiration. So hey, thanks again, Talo. We'll we'll see you on the next one. Okay. All right. Thank All you, right. James. Take care. Thank you, Ray. And thank you, Sarah. Oh yeah, and big thanks to Sarah <laughs> Williams, my colleague. Uh, who uh, is behind the scenes uh, moderating the chat. And, uh, and Sarah does all of the wonderful uh, visual, the, the graphic elements uh, that, that, you, that you see here on the show. So, all right, Tala, we will see you later. And, okay. All right. And so thanks again, everybody, for tuning in. Uh, we will be back in about two weeks, I believe. Uh, that's the plan. I don't have anything concrete. I mean, I, I do... Okay. I should, all right, here we go. I'm like, you know, again, I'm gonna get myself in trouble here. But no, but I, uh, we'll be back in about two weeks. Just stay tuned. The best way to stay informed about what's going on at Fold Space Studio and to know when all of our live broadcasts are coming up is to go to our website, foldspacestudio.com, and subscribe to our email list. That is, that is the sure, uh, the surefire way, is that a word, uh, of, uh, of knowing uh, that, you know, knowing about what's coming up and all that. And again, uh, if you need some paper for the upcoming Origami USA convention, Talo is also teaching as well, uh, or at least we've, we, we haven't gotten the official word. The, the, the teaching deadline was yesterday, so I think we'll know pretty soon uh, what classes we will get to teach. So that's coming up later in June. You can still register for it at origamiusa.org. I highly recommend it. And if you need some paper, go to origamishop.us and uh, check out the convention supply pack that we have put together over there and i think that's about it i don't think i've left anything out thanks again everybody we will see you at the next broadcast